Right, so a bit of an update on our um, on our shelving unit here for all the, the packs. What I've done is I've taken this back outside again, taken it off the side of the wall here. Uh, it's it's screwed in on both ends to the the, the side of the um, the garage. What I've done is I've taken it outside. I've done another coat of that liquid glass that turns pretty much into glass. Um, so I did that this morning. Then I brought that back in, and I'll show you some alterations. I've also set up some fuses, and um, I'll just show you that in detail just in a second. Right. So what I've done is I've added the bottom um, sheet of wood there. The reason for that is so that I can um, have the negative terminals all kind of terminate on that bottom piece of wood and that way one cable can then run up. I've also added at the very top here, I've added another piece of wood. Um, that way I can mount my um, positives so that I've got something to mount to so that they, they're not just hanging loosely. I've also uh, added some fuses. So these are 32 amp um, circuit breakers the DC 125 volts um, there's three of them so one for each bank of five kilowatts they I'll just quickly zoom in if I stay out of the light so that's what they are um, they're not too expensive what I've then done is I've I'll just come out of it there we go I've run one cable up this is an eight gauge cable and what I've done is I've connected it to one XT uh, XT 60 connector. I've also pre-cut the other lengths of cable that'll go between here and the other banks here and here. Um, I've also made them longer than necessary um, for these end with for the first two based upon the third one. Um, the reason I did that is so that the cable length per bank of five kilowatts doesn't change too much or doesn't vary too much. Watching a couple of YouTube videos, it's suggested that when you're connecting packs of series into parallel, um, which is pretty much what we're doing, um, it's best to keep the, um, the wire length the same between all the packs. So to do that, uh, obviously the, f the closest pack um, it needs a, it still needs a long cable as if it was the pack that went over to here. So obviously it just means an extra bit of cable that I have to t uh, hide somewhere. Um, but it'll, it'll look something like that and it will kind of come down. So it goes down from there into uh, a little copper, uh, well, I think it's copper. <laughs> it's kind of golden, a uh, little termination block. That then um, goes through another eight gauge cable, which I was thinking maybe I could put a four gauge cable in there, which I do have lying around, but I've already stuck my termination, uh, which is that little ring connector that goes on here. So I'll see how it goes. I, I probably won't need a four gauge cable because of the, the length is so close, as you can see. Uh, I really don't see it's going to make any difference or we'll have any kind of voltage drop uh, between all that. So we're just going to, have to see how it goes really, um, we're, that's the, the whole principle of, of not cutting the cables yet, so it's kind of dangling a little bit, that's fine for now, um, we just need to kind of get things going, get an idea of what, um, if the cables get, if the 8 gauge cables get warm or not, um, so through these 8 gauge cables as I said we're, we're probably going to pull, um, for example through this cable here, we're going to pull about 27 to 30 amps. So it's an 8 gauge cable so it should be easily able to do uh, 30 amps. But we'll see how it goes. Um, what we've got is, so everything kind of terminates to here. Each of these will come through individually into the, the circuit breakers, this um, 32 amp circuit breakers. They'll come out of that and then go into here individually. So this part here is not going to really matter. It's only going to be the, the connection between the, the block and the top of the inverter and then obviously the block and then the um, the charger that'll come down later down the track so for now that's kind of what I've done and how I've mounted it the reason I've also put a gap in between here and here and yes this cable is a bit longer than necessary but that's okay for now especially for our first couple of runs um, the reason I put a gap into here because um, as I add the extra and the other two what I'm also going to do is put a current monitor on each of these cables here so that we can current uh, so we can monitor the current coming out of each bank of five kilowatts so what I'll do is I'll put my my fuse at the top obviously here fuse will go down to a current monitor the current monitor uh, will be per bank and then obviously the overall what it comes into here will be obviously this number here times three so it'll start off with this times 
um, you know, this might be 27 and this will be zero and this will be zero eventually as we add our banks. So rather than having a current monitor here, here, here and here, it's pointless having one here when, you, when it's better to have them here and here. So that's the idea and the thoughts for that. But what I've also done is for the negative cable here, I've just kind of left it nice and long. It'll eventually go to another kind of um, termination blo uh, block like that. I put a XT60 uh, connector on the end of that, and that'll just go down for the meantime, just down to here. Uh, it's just going to be, let's do a test and let's just see what happens. So that's going to be fine. We don't need that termination block just yet. Um, we're just going to see how this, the top one goes first or the positive one goes first. So next thing, I'm going to put all the, the um, packs in here. Um, I can't really walk too far backwards because all the packs are on the ground. But that's a quick update. So the next update will be how it looks with all the packs in there.